Hey everyone, Peaceman coming at ya. And today I wanted to go over a little topic that I kind of figured out by building our demo for Ensim, and that is how to properly load scenes in specifically Steam VR. So in a normal Unity application, you'll be probably looking at something like the scene manager.load scene. And here's some example code for that. And that's what I initially tried out when I was first loading our scene for Unity and transitioning between a bunch of our simulations. However, what you quickly realize is that every time you load a scene, you'll have a FPS drop, and as a result, it kicks you out into what Steam calls the compositor. So, let's just dive right into Unity here. What I have is basically two scenes that you can get off the asset store. One's called Aircraft, and then the other one is a Snow Mountain scene, and that's the one you see in the editor right now. And so, what, so like you could go ahead and just copy that code off of the Unity documentation, but what I want to show you here is using what SteamVR calls the SteamVR load level. And I mean a bunch of this code here you can build up pretty easily. It's just all it's doing is here I have the level names and then here I'm just constantly looping through each level whenever I press any key down. Obviously you can also change this to be for say like the Steam controller pull. But just to give you a quick sense of like what you would actually need to build. And then the only other thing you really need to do is call Steam level or uh, Steam VR load level dot begin and this line here and then pass it the, the level string value that you want. And that's a bare minimum what you want to do. And what this does instead is it gives you control of that transition phase between each level and you can change that background to instead of being the, the space scene or whatever the user has customized their scene to be in Steam VR, it can now become, say, like a white background or your own skybox or anything really. And I think that's just, it's a great feature to have and it can make it basically gives you control over the transition as opposed to just letting Steam VR have control. So this is basically the code you'll want and make sure to pause the video here if you just want to copy and paste this into your own script. But uh, if we want to actually dive a little deeper here, what I want to go ahead and do is first thing is let's just take a look at what the Steam VR load level. Let's see if I can find it here. So this is what the actual script parameter wise looks like, and you'll see that there's a lot of variables here that we can define. So the first one here is obviously the name of the level. Then there's a bunch of things here for internal processes, like if you want to run something. So, for example, in the lab, when you go into, I believe, if you go into the Aperture Repair Demo, or I think uh, the Secret Shop, both of those are actually executables that run outside of their Unity program. So they, they'll be using like this internal process execution, basically, to run those. So that's what's happening with those. You have the option to load your scene additively or asynchronously. And then you have a bunch of different options here for providing textures that you can use for loading the scene, uh, the progress bar. Um, you have the skybox here for like basically defining things. So uh, one experiment that I want to try, and maybe we'll do this in a stream in the future, is create a 360 camera that is in your scene. Take, a, take pictures for the, all these variables right here. And then when you want to transition scene, up, give those textures into that. I think that might be something pretty doable to do. I don't know if it'll break for performance or not, but it's something to experiment with. Um, and if you don't have a skybox, the other thing you can do is just go ahead and just change the background color. And what this does is it sends you back into the Steam VR compositor scene, and it has it in a variety of different colors based on like do you want it red, blue, black, whatever. So. That'll, that's what that does, and the, probably the most important settings here are the fade out time and the fade in time, and also this post load settle time. So what that'll do is basically fade that transition from the compositor or from your current scene to the compositor scene, and then back out. So again, pretty important here for what you need to do. And the last boolean here is if you actually just want to like, if you have the script sitting in your scene already, then you can just go ahead and automatically enable it. So that's pretty much all of the values that you need to be aware of as far as like customizing your load level. But let's go ahead and actually dive into what is in this script. So this openvr.compositor. So that that's basically like as soon as you put the headset on, 
before you've opened up any application, the com that's what the compositor is. It's basically their, what I would call like a lobby. And so that's basically what's driving this whole thing. So if we just go up to the top real fast and just go over the script from top to bottom, there's, it's actually, there's a lot of code here, but it's actually pretty customizable. And I think I, I appreciate that a lot as a C-sharp script because for example, um, one thing that I end up using, so I prefer using the int ID in your build settings for your level as opposed to passing in the string. I just find it like, for example, in our level switch, it's just so easy to like mod your, your ID value and then just build that. So that's one thing I customize personally, but you can go ahead and customize those however you want. Um, those are all the variables. Uh, they have a few private variables here. And so the way this really works is if you don't want to use begin, or let's first look at begin and then you'll understand, I guess, a bit better what this, what's happening here. So you have all your parameters here. What they do is just like we did in the scene, we go ahead and create a add component Steam VR load level. And then it sets all of these values into that Steam VR load level object that you put into your scene. And when you want to actually activate it, then you call trigger. So if we go up to trigger, what it's just checking is, are we currently loading any scene? And is our level name a valid one? Valid in this case being it's not empty or null. And if so, then we just, based on all of these public variables that we have, we start loading the level. So there's a few on GUI stuff. We don't really need to worry about that, but I mean, that's mainly for like the progress bars and the all that stuff but there's a bunch of commented out code you have your updates for overlays and then there's the load level so this is a coroutine that i mean it's basically because this is such a complex process it's gonna have to break things up by in multiple frames to actually handle it so you have a bunch of loading stuff here it sets its variables and we keep going I mainly want to get down to where, so you can see the skybox stuff here. I mainly want to get down to where it's actually loading the level, and just so that you can feel it's a little, a little comfortable and like easy to handle. So if we go here, this is where pretty much the brunt of that loading happens. And as you can see, it's already using the scene management. It's just basically a wrapper around it, so that you get that more seamless transition, and you can control what happens as far as FPS is concerned. But yeah, basically you can, it just loads your level with the name, you can set the additive, you can set whether or not um, it loads asynchronously. I, you can actually go ahead and customize this code a bit so that it, it actually goes ahead and does a proper asynchronous. Right now, the way this is written, the load level and the load async kind of do the same thing in the sense that they, I mean, this one, like, loads asynchronously and then but you're still stuck in the compositor until it comes out a, a proper async would be like it kicks you to the compositor comes back and then it's loading in the background and then when you actually want to load it that's when you go ahead and tell the async to to load it up but i mean i mean like that's something you can change here i've been playing around with this code a lot um and then there's just the go ahead and garbage collect everything, warm up the shaders that you're going to need to load in, all of that fun stuff, just more events, and yeah, that pretty much does it as far as that, and then the last thing is you're not loading anymore. So there's a few more stuff for overlays, so, but that, I mean, again, that's not a huge deal. Like, the, the gist of it is really happening here, and then the code above and below is what's actually controlling the fades and fades out, and any of the other customizations you have to provide to it. So that's pretty much what happens with this super important script and definitely if you're pushing anything to the Steam store or anything like you're probably going to want to make sure you're using this as opposed to just um, just using the scene manager at load scene. So pretty short video but I hope it's helpful and let me go ahead and just quickly pull up the code that I wrote again. I mean it's again nothing terribly fancy it's just a, basically a simple manager to keep track of which scene we're in and which tr scene we want to transition to and just to show that you, you it actually works we can just go in here i have the vibe connected I, and i i put it on any key and i just press space so 
there we go. And it, it, I wish I could show you, like, unfortunately, what you don't see in here is the actual fades and fades out. You actually need to put the vibe on to actually say it. But, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. And let me know if you like this video by giving it a like. And subscribe if you haven't. That really helps us a lot. A lot. And you can also follow us on social media. But, yeah, hopefully this was useful. And I'll see you guys next time. This has been Fuse Man. I'm signing out.